So what if I told you that there's a movie set in an alternate future, maybe an alternate present, we, we won't nitpick too much about that. In a world where vampires and man have been locked in a war forever, but instead of vampires being the guy who bullied me in high school, there are these grotesque eyeless monsters. St st still pretty hot though. And at some point in alternate history, the Catholic Church trained these super soldiers called priests to win this war. So the filmmakers had a license to do all kinds of craziness with the fight scenes. But wait, there's more! This is a dystopian sci-fi, not a fantasy-inspired film as you might have come to expect. But also a post-apocalyptic Mad Maxian movie. But also a western? Kinda? We, we have Carl Urban, Lily Collins, Maggie Q and Paul frickin' Bettany. And regardless if whether or not you think this made for a great movie. You probably didn't, statistically speaking, at least. That's not important. The soundtrack is genuinely one of the most moving I've heard in my life. Priest is a pretty good movie, guys. Or at, le at least the score is. Title card. Now I should say my goal with this video is not to review the film as much as focus on why I found it compelling as a musician and a film score enthusiast. You see, at the time of its release, this film got mixed reviews and barely made its money back. And although that is fair, it's pretty unfortunate because by my account, all the performances are pretty great. Are there flaws? Sure. Are there characters that feel like they serve little to no purpose? Maybe a little. Is the score by Christopher Young criminally underrated, redeeming the whole thing? You bet you're behind. What is the purpose of the film score? Broadly speaking, the music in a film serves to guide the subconscious into feeling what the filmmakers want us to feel going into a scene. A lot of the time music is used to shift our perspective and trick us into sensing the tone of an interaction, the mood of a room or the emotions of a character, often serving subtext into a more digestible form. Because music makes us feel in this visceral way, it can be used to change the two-dimensional into relatable. I am of the opinion that a good soundtrack is often introduced to save less than perfect films. Oh, oh would you like you would like some proof of its efficacy? Would you s sit down. Remember how hyped you were after seeing the trailer for Suicide Squad with Bohemian Rhapsody? I don't care if you didn't like the film. That soundtrack killed. The original Star Wars, although a good film, would not have been as fondly remembered if not for the groundbreaking work done by John Williams. You look me in the eye and tell me this isn't compelling. You think this would have been as effective with any other music? No. So the question that I want to ask is, how did Priest, an overall kind of just fine movie, do on this front? Oh boy, are you in for a treat. Let's break it down! Early on we see that the score leaves a whole bunch of room for honestly some pretty great sound design. Instrumentation wise, it is important to note... <laughs> note. <laughs> Lol. It is important to note that on the surface we hear a lot of choir and organ. This intro does not hold back. We associate these sounds with the classical ideas of cathedrals and hymns. But all of this is recontextualized within horns and synth, these big Wah. like what we associate with more modern composers. This fusion allows us to hear a glimpse of the setting we're being introduced to before the film even begins. I mentioned earlier that this score really gives room for sound design. The first scene at this outpost is almost completely devoid of music. This is important because after the bombastic intro, we feel the tension that the filmmakers have put into this room. All the audio tension is handled with sound design and that perhaps is the score's greatest strength. It allows us to bathe in silence. It, it's great. The first time we are shown the cyberpunk city, we are treated to this lovely oppressive choral drone. Accompanied by these propaganda-esque recordings, all of this immediately primes us for what we are supposed to feel as the music swells with the introduction of our protagonist. <laughs>
The music underscores, but when it returns in the confession booth, the tempo has been increased and more and more brass gets introduced. There is this tension between this man's faith and what this world he fought for has become. And remember, to go against the church is to go against God. I wanted to take a moment here, because when re-watching this, this was the moment that caused me to want to make this video. After our hero is introduced to his very literal call to action, note the piano melody, alone, contemplative. Lucy talked about you. We don't see the priest's face, we don't get to know what he's thinking until the melody repeats after a big cinematic hit. Full orchestration leads us into him addressing the council, retroactively framing this as contemplation and this as resolve. The next big cut is to this exterior of the train where we hear what feels like this film's imperial march. But get this, when we are shown our villain for the first time, what do we hear? That's no way to treat a friend. Please, let me go. A dark answer to the leitmotif we just heard introducing our hero. Right. Peace, my peace. Darker, more chaotic instrumentally and a slightly altered melody, but making use of the same rhythm. He'll come after you. Now that's something I'm absolutely counting on. <laughs> Although easy to miss, this is pretty powerful. Harmonically, this frames the two characters as brothers, so to speak. And the idea of our villain being a dark opposite of our hero, as cliche as it might be, it's cemented. The next big piece of music introduces when the priest leaves the city in a slow march, determined almost the reverse of the agitated introduction to the villain's train. To me, this evokes the conquest of paradise from the film 1492, and I can't help but think this has to be intentional. When he reaches the outpost, we are shown a family portrait with the girl's face out. We hear a familiar theme. Is the score subconsciously and thematically tying his resolve to the girl, further cementing his motives? Gu guys, I think this movie might be good. And later when we are told that there was hope for him to return to a normal life post-war? Didn't seem right anymore. Didn't I tell you this was going to be a treat? I think this is a good time to mention that this score does an excellent job at driving the pace. Even though this film has a tendency to feel like a bunch of set pieces tied together by motorcycle rides, these segments don't feel like they drag. This flaw really becomes apparent if you remove the music, but with the added scoring, these motorcycle rides feel intentional and they feel like they have a purpose within the world. With each of these transitionary scenes, we are shown a world of incredible scale, supported by these ambient vocal lines later in the film. I'm, I'm very much reminded of those travel scenes in Lord of the Rings. When we reach the first bit of tension, the score jumps a little more firmly into the horror music thing. You know, where the slower pacing is accompanied by controlled music when our protagonist is in control, and heavy percussive rushing when the hearts start pounding and time is of the essence. <laughs> There are these beats of silence when the priest makes decisions that really cement the feeling of a cold, trained killing machine. Wait, your words mean nothing to them, priest. For thou art with me. movies might have to spend more time trying to prove to us that our protagonist is really cool, the music does a lot of the work in this one. A very cool moment that stuck with me is this. In a dialogue between Discount Han Solo and Priestface, the music is fairly tense, but we get this line from our protagonist. You know, she's infected. 
I'll kill her. And the tension rises as we hear this retort. You'll try, but you won't be able to. I wasn't there to protect her once. I won't make that same mistake again. And this isn't just an audio sting for this moment. The music leads us into this establishing shot. Let's take a step back. This dialogue scene is one of the only two so far with intentional scoring, supporting the emotions of our characters. It's this one and this one in the beginning of our journey. This colors the rest of this on-screen relationship, but also makes this scene as important as this one. And it succeeds in painting an extra layer of tension on the next scene. Now I will be frank, the bit in the tunnels does rely a little heavily on tension built only for a jump scare, but we'll forgive it, for after this we get a masterclass in how to make an enemy feel imposing. It's too big to get down here, which is the only reason you're still alive. Who the hell is that? You ready? When we don't see the monster that our protagonists are fighting, we get this really bassy brass hits and massive percussion. And notice how it lets up the second the tide turns in favor of our heroes. Again, it's kind of cheesy, but Guys, I think this movie might be good. So remember how annoying the whole, ooh, I'm building tension, ooh, jump scare, you, you know, yeah, that was annoying, right? Well, I think the composer felt the same way. He builds tension again, and by now we know what to expect. The movie even gives us the most cliche lines ever said while waiting for a jump scare in a movie. Hello? Hello? Is anybody there? But instead of the whole string section attacking their instruments, we get... <laughs> Flute melody? Here's what I think the composer has gone for. Instead of just a spook, we are given characterization. This whole scene is an orchestrational treat, and this is where we establish the stakes and our villain as having the upper hand. We are given flutes, our villain's leitmotif, and then patriotic fanfare. And the sheer irony of our villain orchestrating his first on-screen attack to the first triumphant piece of music in this movie. Yikes! After our heroes discover the town and piece together the villain's plan, we have another couple of scenes, but I wanted to focus on this one. The loneliness both these characters have felt very much brought to the front, but the music swells when the priest denies himself the companionship of the priestess. If the music had been done in a more cliche way, the music would have swelled with the advances and fallen when he denies her. This cements our understanding of this character and all he is. He is a hunter now and he isn't free to take this chance. Motorcycle scene! Honestly, even though I joke about the motorcycle scene, this right here might be the best part of the score. Our first sense of triumphance and confidence of the part of our heroes. We know this ends here. The strings, the brass, the choir all finally come together. The subsequent battle scenes are mostly divided into three. The priest's battle with the black hat, the cowboy's search for the girl, and the priestess's motorcycle desert fight. Motorcycles! And each have distinct audio identities. Can we take a moment for how the train tracks match up with the percussion? You fell! You let go! Guys, I think this score might be good. More dramatic melodies take over when we join the priestess. Within her battle, the stakes are the highest and they get higher. This perhaps is the battle we're meant to feel isn't a sure thing. The train cars are dark and scored mostly with horror ambience and rising tones with dissonant harmonies. Again, giving way mostly to just really nice sound design. I will admit that I don't know if these segments are really important to the film. They might just, you know, be here because we needed some horror scenes in our vampire movie. Right before... The all is lost moment! Our heroes catch up with Lucy and the black hat. We get this brief knife fight and are treated to this musical moment. Very good. Run fast. Just like your father. Followed immediately by this. He never told you. 
Okay, so I mentioned that our light motifs have this call and response, but this is the first time we hear them interact. And the movie has had ample opportunity, for example, the first time our hero and our villain actually meet. But this reframes our hero's light motif. This melody signifies not our hero, but his relationship with his daughter. The rest of the music is very intentionally frantic and full of stabs and tension because we have to wonder whether or not our hero will make it in time. Our plots converge with this epic perpetual riser and the instruments crescendo. Wow. Again, pretty excellent use of silence on the composer's part. By stripping away the music in climactic moments like this, we get to sit in what just happened. We get to really feel, okay, the, the, the thing has happened now. As cliche as it is, the Gladiator R vocal does a great job at making us feel this moment of both relief and fear, and then resolve. Oh boy, Harmony has so much power. Finally, we get some resolution. We get some of our first major harmonies and some victory. We have not had many happy cadences when it comes to this movie thus far. That, it makes these really effective. After final dialogue, we hear this triumphant break into what I can only describe as a somber fanfare. We land on this unresolved chord. Our protagonist's work has only begun. Honestly, it's so sad that good film scores only get recognized when they're attached to good films. And I'll be the first to say, Priest isn't perfect. But if you're a fan of good film scores and high concept action movies, I wholeheartedly recommend it. Where the film might disappoint when it comes to motivating plot choices and character motivation, the score makes up for it with a compelling sense of scale and perhaps some of my favorite uses of leitmotifs in an action movie. 8 out of 10, it's a blast, go watch it! Hey, you! Thank, thanks for watching the, the thing, the whole thing. This was definitely a little different for the channel, but I do hope you enjoyed it. If you want more of this kind of video, well, you're, you're gonna get it, because I'm gonna be making more video essays in this year. I've really enjoyed the process. A lot of my favorite YouTube channels use this kind of video essay style, and it's just been a blast to make. But I want to discuss more films that are redeemed by their soundtrack. And yeah, go watch Priest. That's my recommendation for this week. At time of recording, it's on Netflix, and I know you might think I spoiled mo most of the movie. It, I really didn't. I didn't really show any other action scenes, and I just kind of loosely touched on the plot. So you'll still really be able to enjoy it if you go watch it now. If you know a movie that you like, but you kind of objectively know that it's not good, but but you know the music's really nice, please tell me in the comments, I want to watch more of those kinds of movies. And just genuinely, thanks so much for watching my first video of the year slash decade. If you're still here, like, you, you probably enjoyed this, so you could go ahead and subscribe, if you haven't. Thank you. That, that means a lot. Ah, it's, it's nothing. Uh, uh, it's... <clears throat> okay, bye.